So Jack is on holiday at the moment, which means I've been allowed, begrudgingly, to come and see a brand new car. This is the Peugeot E3008. And I think it's very interesting what uh, Peugeot are presenting here. This is built from the ground up as an electric car. Battery, motor, motor control system at front, front wheel drive. It's a fastback SUV. And what I think is peculiar about this is that that's how it was designed, but they've also tacked on a petrol burning hybrid. We have to remember that a petrol burning hybrid needs petrol or it won't work. So it's a petrol car. So they've added that on afterwards. In the old days, it used to be they had a petrol car, they'd take the engine out and put a battery and motor in and it would be a sort of compromised electric car. This is exactly the other way around, which I think is fascinating. So I want to take a closer look. Let's do that. Welcome to the Fully Charged Show. Love the Fully Charged Show? Join us live in Canada this September, the South in October and Australia and London in 2025. So this is Peugeot's latest uh, all-electric, e well the E3008, obviously it's all-electric because it's got E in front of it, but it's on a new platform, which I'll explain about later, uh, which is, uh, this particular model has a 73 kilowatt hour battery and around 322 miles of range, something like that, uh, according to their uh, statistics that I can see on the very impressive single screen, big wide display that's in front of me that does have uh, a lot of information. It's got uh, a, a range of buttons here that are, I say buttons, a touch screen, but it feels, it, it gives you a little bit of feedback when you touch it. It's a bit of a haptic screen. And that's a very simple way of choosing what you can see in front of you. And at the moment, I've got the sat nav like directly in front of me here, which is really useful. I like that thing. It's also on there, but you can swap these things around. It's very, very customizable. Um, it has all those sort of standard things that electric cars have. It has uh, three settings for uh, drive mode. So it's eco, normal and sport. That's very easily uh, uh, chosen by this little toggle here. I've got these buttons down here, I think are very good. So they're the ones where you're in the car, it's misted up, you just want to stop it being misted. You don't have to go through nine layers of menus on a touch screen. You just, there's a little button there specifically to do that. So in a sense, it's like old analog cars which had toggles and physical buttons. So the E3008 is definitely a massive step change for Peugeot. This is a really, this is like a next generation car really. And the look of it, 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 it is an SUV, it's a fastback SUV. And according to Peugeot, it is the smallest in the 100% electric SUV bracket. So all the other electric SUVs are bigger than this. And it does feel slightly more compact, a little bit tighter, but it's still, you know, a big comfy car. When I've been driving it, it's been, it's not felt like a tiny little hatchback. It feels like a big car. It's got these special things, which I quite like, which are the, it's the three claw signature look. Arr, it's got it because it's a lion with three claws. <laughs> I don't know how many claws lions have. I thought they might have four. Anyway, these lions have got four because the, the kind of symbol of Peugeot from the very beginning, and it's a really old company, is a lion's head. These are 20 inch wheels. They come, you can come with 19 or 20 inch wheels. It's got special flangey bits there to keep it super aerodynamic, all that sort of stuff. That badge denotes that this is a GT. And if, you're, if you pull up at the traffic lights alongside this Peugeot, you know, <laughs> that guy's got a GT. It might be a woman. And around the side, you can see the kind of fastback look it's got. It's got this uh, floating spoiler, as it's described here. And this looks just like a big black panel. It's actually a window. That is actually a window underneath there. About there. I can just about make it out. Yeah, it's like there is a window. Uh, charge port is here, obviously very, very easy to use, very sensible. Uh, oh, sorry, it closes like that. Then round the back again, we've got a repeat of the three claws look. So when the lights are on, you've got these three bars that come in like that, the, the three claw look, E3008 there, it says that there. The, you can open it, if I had the keys with me, I could open it by putting my foot under there, but it does open very easily. And it's got 588 litres of space in the boot, which is big. But what I really like is this. So it's got a real flat floor that you can load stuff on and it's, you don't have to lift it over a lip. But if you've got more stuff to put in, you lift it up a bit, you slide it forward a bit, and then it goes down and you've got to load more room. And then underneath that, you've got even more space, which is where they put cables and, uh, you know, 
emergency packs and all those things. So that's actually really clever, I think. So if you put all the seats down, it's 1,663 litres, which obviously loads of space. But you can also just put one seat down and you've got different uh, combinations of doing that. So one of the peculiarities uh, that I noticed as soon as I got in the car was the size of the steering wheel. It does seem comically small. It's almost like a kind of game controlling steering wheel you'd have in front of your computer. But actually, I find, you know, as soon as I started driving, I was completely unaware of it. It works very well. The controls that are on the steering wheel, uh, once you've learned to use them, are really good. So the adaptive cruise control I've used a couple of times now, it works really well, very secure. So I'm not using any pedals now. I'm letting the car drive itself at that speed. But if there was a car in front that was going a little bit slower than us, it would slow down in a very safe way. You in increase the speed by literally by individual miles an hour. I don't know if you hold it that. Oh yeah, if you hold it down, it will do in increments of five miles an hour. So I'm just keeping it at a reg regular steady speed because we've there's quite a lot of farm traffic on these roads. So I don't want to go over the brow of a hill and see a tractor. So that works. Now that, and I managed to find that while I was driving and it was very, I didn't even look. I just, I, I looked before and I went, oh, it's assist there. Then it comes up on the screen, tells you what to do. Tap the brake, it stops, which is really good. So the, the basic, you would learn to drive this car and learn some of its basic functions within five minutes of getting in it. You know, then from then on, there are clearly a lot of other functions within it that you would learn as you drove it more. And you need to spend, you know, a long time in a vehicle to get to know all its, quirks and idiosyncrasies but this one is you know from the point of view of the driving experience i think now it's become this thing that the bar is so high the uh, uh, in terms of how the the car feels when you drive it how the electric motor pulls you along it's 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 totally frictionless and i mean that i'm saying that about this car because this is clearly a very well made car made by a huge company that have really learnt a lot about making electric cars. They've been doing it for a long time. They've revised and updated and refined what they're doing. And this is kind of the next step up and it does show. And it just feels like a completely competent vehicle that no one could drive in and go, oh, I'm not sure I feel confident in an electric car. I mean, I have to put on a whiny voice, which I shouldn't, but it's just, it's just a car. It's a big car that well, a family would be really suited to. It's got lots of room inside. It's got lots of storage in the back. You know, it, it, it's, uh, um, you know, it's a car. So we're not going to be able to experience the, the full, you know, reality of the range uh, on this drive. We've got the car for a couple of hours. You know, I've had, to, I've had a chance to sit in it and they've explained how the, the, the systems work within the car. You know, that's fine. And then I drive it for a bit and you can see, and I mean, I've done, I don't even know, at the moment, I don't even know how to tell how many miles I've done. Some miles, and I've used some electricity, but it's impossible to judge. I mean, I'm, the car is still at 93%, so, you know, it's nearly full. And it's got huge amounts of range left. You know, I can't, it's got 315 miles. There we go, I've just seen where it is. It's got 315 miles of range left, and I've used uh, 7%. So you can work it out. If you've got a pen and paper, you can do some maths and uh, work out. But I mean, it, what I, I think the underlying thing I want to say is, regardless of how far we drive it today, it's obvious this car has ample range. Uh, 73 kilowatt hour battery pack uh, with a really refined uh, energy system with, with the motors, with the, the battery management system, all that is like next generation. It is, it is what we're seeing happen is the, the amount of miles and or kilometers you can travel on a kilowatt hour is constantly increasing because of those energy efficiencies. One of the things I like about it is the um, like the battery has got a warranty for 100,000 miles or eight years, whichever comes sooner. So, you know, when people go on and on still about battery life, just shut up and leave it, ignore it. So you've got a 100,000 mile warranty on the battery and it's not going to go wrong. I know that. But they've also added to that and it's part of the thing. So if you lease or buy this car, you also get the Allure, mm, the Allure, inclusive, it's inclusive in the price. And that is the Allure warranty, which covers 
everything else in the car, all the electronics. So the motor, the drive system, the um, battery management system, the all the electronics in the car is also covered under an eight year, 100,000 mile warranty, which is not bad. So this particular model comes with a 73 kilowatt hour battery, which gives it a range of around, it says 322, I think, when you get in it, somewhere around the, over 300. But the, the next uh, model that comes out in literally in a couple of months will have a 98 kilowatt hour battery. And that's the one they're saying will do 422 miles. I mean, I just want to have a go in one and drive it a long way to see because that's WLTP uh, range, which as we know, is not exactly accurate. But I mean, even if you knock 50 miles off both those ranges, it's a really adequate range for any electric car. So it's got lovely, uh, very comfy, because I've sat in them now, Alcantara seats. Uh, which is a kind of uh, fake suede, but really nice. But I'm intrigued by this material because I've actually, I've got an old suit that looks like this material. I'm sure this is better, uh, but it does give it a kind of slightly softer look because a lot of the edges are very sharp and hard, uh, you know, in the in the design language of the this Peugeot. It's the software, I am enjoy, I've enjoyed using it when I was driving up. It's pretty intuitive to use. I, it wasn't too complicated uh, uh, to get used to. I learned it very quickly, but it also does have uh, Android Auto and uh, Apple CarPlay that very simply connected. Uh, little charge place there, you can put your phone, that's very nice. You can also shove it in that little cubby hole there. There's charge points coming out there. So it's got a lot of useful little thing. There's another little, a big, quite a big thing there. You can put a load of stuff in that. There's a lot of storage in this car. I will give it that. There really is plenty of room to shove things in corners. The uh, very, the rapid choice buttons there, those are really good. I really like that. Because sometimes even in cars you, you're used to, you know, I have a bit of trouble with a certain Tesla Model 3, when you want to just clear the windscreen, you've got to go on the big screen. There's nowhere else to do it. This, there's one button right there. You get used to it really quick. It's the same, the MG4 has got a button. If you want to clear the windows, you press a button that goes click and it clears them. And this is the same as that, which is a great step forward. Here, the volume for your, your infotainment, for your music or whatever you're listening, a podcast obviously about science and technology, really easy, volume up and down and also, off, which is good. I like that. Drive mode is there, so you can go from uh, eco to normal to sport. I've got to say, I didn't notice a massive difference between the three uh, when I was driving it. It didn't. It wasn't like a sudden jolt where you were in sport mode. So it's all fairly uh, vanilla, and uh, but but you know, 100% adequate. You don't. This isn't a car for roaring round alpine roads at 90 miles an hour. You know, that's not what it's built for. So the E3008, I mean, no question, really pleasant car to drive. If you get one of these, you'll love it. It's so, it's got plenty of room in the back. It's got room for kids, it's got room for luggage, all that stuff. It's got all your mod cons. It's actually got chat GPT, which I haven't tried. So I don't know what it is. It's, it's, what I basically understand is it's going to be more intelligent than I am. And that's fairly helpful. Uh, one of the intriguing things though, still, and this is really still a mystery to me. And I've talked to the people at Peugeot about this and I haven't really had a clear explanation is this car is about 46,000 pounds and change for the fully electric version, 73 kilowatt hour battery. The hybrid version, which is a conversion of this electric car, and they've crammed a pe little petrol engine in the front, that is 36,000 pounds, nearly 10,000 pounds cheaper. And I cannot get my head around why that is the case and what the decision making at Stellantis is to, to make what is a really impressive electric car, but price it there when they can produce a hybrid car, which is far more technologically complicated. It really is. It's much more complicated. Is it just the battery? The battery price has dropped so dramatically. This doesn't make sense to me anymore. And we need to question European automakers and worry for them because I want Peugeot to succeed and I want Peugeot to be around in 100 years time after it's been around for the last 200 years because there's a big threat coming in the shape of Chinese cars which are cheaper. And that's the problem. And they're really well made. I still think this is really worth your consideration if you're looking for a new car or you're thinking of leasing something. It is a really fine car. I was really impressed with it. I reckon even Jack would be impressed with it. Anyway, that's all. Please do subscribe, tell your friends. And as always, if you have been, thank you for watching.